Hello, hello, everybody. Oof, these things, my elbow things were poking me in the back. Um, how is everyone doing? Hopefully you're off to a good start on a Monday. I realize I haven't done this live stream in two weeks because, so like, inevitably I set it up and I thought, I thought like, okay, it's fine. I'll go set it up here early. And I'm glad I did come up early because... I realized I left my computer charger at work. So my laptop is at about 85% right now. So this probably won't be a super long live stream. I mean, that's that's enough, I think, to get us to at least to like the usual like 45 minutes to an hour. So um so yeah, so that's that. Apologies on that. I'm oh I'm hoping it's at work. God, I hope it I didn't just like fall out of my bag somewhere or something. But yeah, 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 yeah. So it's Monday. I hope everybody, uh, has, like I said, had a good start to the week, and I hope that, um, you know, uh, you had a good weekend. Ugh, I'm in this weird, like, I don't know what is going on, and I really hope this floor isn't singing, but I have this weird, like, the floor feels slanted right here. I don't know if it's something like my chairs, the wheels are uneven or something. Jeez, it is driving me crazy right now. It's driving me crazy. Um, I don't know. I know I'm all angled weird. God, I cannot wait to have a better space to do this in someday. Um, just, I'm trying not to have a, I, I have been having a, like, a. I was doing all right. And then I was having like a little meltdown over something. It's just not like anything, whatever, you know, sometimes just like mentally, oh my God, sorry. There'll be this like one thing and it feels like someone's itching the inside of your brain and that is what's happening to me right now. I am going to have a full on, th I can't like sit in the chair correctly to do this until I get positioned right. Um, this is embarrassing. Just watch me have a full on anxiety attack right now because uh, that's what it feels like I'm headed toward. Got the little sweat going right now with the goosebumps. Anyway, um, look at my slimer bucket. I put a light inside of him, and now he glows. Whoa. So I, I got one of these. Uh, I mean, it's hard to tell because I have really bright lights. It's like to the light bulbs I put in these, when one of them burned out, they're just like these white Ikea light bulbs, and they are so bright. And uh, I have another ring light. So like anything with a light on it you, is really kind of, like you can't see any color or anything. You can only see the white light. But I feel like I got this at Ikea. It's like just the small sort of like the tap light thing. It was like three bucks. And, you know, you just tap it. And it's that same sort of, well, this way I guess it's kind of blue. But, um, put that guy in there. And then, oh, nice booty. Um, rub the booty for good luck. And then we put him here. I don't know if it really makes a difference, the light on or off. When, when I'm up here, like, I think we'll just leave him off. I mean, you could tell it was lit up before, but um, when I'm up here and like I turn the lights off and I turn, like I have a neon sign, like a T-Rex head neon sign that I got at Target over there. It's like the kids want, it's like 40 bucks. Um, and then like my lightning bolt is right here. And then I have my Guardians of the Galaxy neon here. And then I have another neon sign down here that I just don't have anywhere to put. That's the Dex's Diner from episode two from the Star Wars Celebration. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this one. And uh, whenever I get a better space, I want to like, put the neon signs up there. I just love modern neon, which is like not technically really neon, but um, I'd rather it be like these LED light strips or whatever it is, just because they don't make noise and neon does make noise. So, um, but the, the, I like the, I like just sitting and like, I, I want to learn how to take, um, take, or I not want to learn. I get, yeah, no, I want to learn like the, um, I've seen photographers who can do like night photography, but it's like completely lit by neon. So like people look really cool in them. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's a lot of fun. So, um, yes, there is a question in the chat. Ross is asking, do I have the shorts to match the top? I do. I'm not wearing them right now. I am wearing pants. I'm just wearing blue shorts right now, but, um, but, uh, yes, I have the matching bottoms to all of the collection, this one here. And, um, yeah, I, I love a, I love the tuxedo and, um, you know, tis water park season. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping to, um, I'm hoping to, uh, you know, uh, go to the water parks or a pool or even better. If somebody has a pool, that would be great. Um, 
I see a question. Uh, I did get the Stay Puft Sipper, but he's downstairs. Um, I was wash rinsing him out, and I forgot to bring him back up here because I want to put him up here too. He's gonna go next to Slimer, I think, or somewhere. Um, and then I did get uh, I did get the trap popcorn bucket from AMC, which in hindsight I really should have just got the one from Regal because I feel like so the Regal one didn't have a popcorn bucket, but it like opened and the popcorn could go in there. But it had lights and sound, and I guess I was watching a video on it online. It's like technically the Regal one is more screen accurate. Um, uh, the thing with the AMC one, which if you've seen it, has like a bucket that sits on top of it. Um, and it's because the AMC one, when the doors open, the hinges open, there is, um, it's just flat and there's lights right there. Which I think is cool because I was actually thinking that if the, those lights can stay on, then um, maybe Slimer could sit on top of it. So it would be like, it would do the idea of the light I have in there. Um, so I thought I thought that would be fun. But the AMC one was like $15 more than the other. So it was like 40 bucks. But I got it. I got it because it's Ghostbusters. And Mama loves some Ghostbusters. So um, I did get this one from this cup from um, Cinemark. It was literally all they had um, when I went like two weeks ago to see um, Wonka right before literally the week it went on max, but that's fine. I prefer to see movies in the theater anyways, but, um, and I like went back to be like, Oh, I'll get another one. Cause I got that bucket and this at the same time. And I was like, well, when I come back, I'll, I'll get another one of these cups. Cause I, I love drinking. I just fill these up with water and ice and it's just like, okay. So I feel like I, you drink more water that way. Um, and, uh, there was none of those, no Slimer popcorn buckets. I never even saw the plushes, the Cinemark plushes. So if anyone ever sees the plushes out there, I really wanted the s'mores, um, mini puff or there was, um, I know there was a Slimer and there was another mini puff. There's a mini puff who's wearing like 3d glasses and that's actually the one I want the most, but, um, shoot me a line. I'll, I'll Venmo you or PayPal you or something like that. Cause they're like sold out online. Um, but I, yeah, I love Ghostbusters, and I actually surprisingly don't have a lot of Ghostbusters merch. I do have a full size Proton pack that, if you are not familiar with this channel, I did a live unboxing when I got that last year, and it is a long video, and it takes me about 30 minutes to just get the box open. Um, but I did do the pre order for the two in the box, which is the trap and the PKE meter. So those will hopefully, um, be coming in, uh, I think they're supposed to come out by the end of the year, by like December or something like that. Is there a delay with my sound at all? Hello, Mary Jo, good to see you in here. Um, yeah, uh, show us the shorts. I can't, you're not gonna be able to see them. Um, the, uh, did I put up the ghost trap po popcorn bucket anywhere? Um, yeah, right now it's at work. Um, I brought it there cause I was trying to put it on the shelf behind me to see if, cause like we have little, these little shelves that are going to be behind us that we can put our like own personal knickknacks on it. And I was like, Oh, this will be fun to put here just because I don't really have anywhere to put it here. I am going to redo some, these shelves, um, for sure. But I, my Neutrona wand is all the way up there and I'm always paranoid it's going to fall. So I want that to come down and be like here. And hopefully I can fit the wand and Slimer on the same shelf. I don't think I can though, because the Neutrino wand is long. And I like to keep the front part extended because I'm worried about the hinges snapping on it if I keep it, or like stretching out. But um, but yeah, uh, um, yeah. So I'm, I'm in that mode right now where I was like, man, I don't have any Ghostbuster stuff. So Ross and Lana were kind enough, like when Ross, was up, uh, who's in the chat right now, um, and, uh, oh, Arthur and the King, Mary Jo, I think almost went to go see that, because my Arthur is King Arthur, my little baby, uh, so they got, they were able to order me an extra one, because I slept through the, the link when it went live, and he let me Venmo him for this, which was very nice of him, um, this lounge fly, which looks kind of like the lounge fly mini bag, but it is huge, it, it, I mean, not huge, it, they say full size backpack. Um, I would say it's a little bit smaller than like this type of a lounge fly, which is the ones I usually I would get. Like this is my. Um, but what's really nice about this, I mean, is I just dropped that. Um, is it has this that goes over this and a zipper, so it's a double thing. But on the inside, 
it, you can see it's got like this little tab here and then it's pretty pretty big and bigger on the inside you know as some would say um I can't wait for can't wait for that. You see the trailer come out for the new the new season of Doctor Who, and you should definitely watch it, even if you've never watched Doctor Who before, because it's basically like starting over. So, uh, but this but this bag's nice. It's like these clips are nice, and they're metal, and they like clip down on the side, and then it's got like the pockets on either side here, which is cool, and then the ghosts on the back. But what I like too about the straps is this part of the padding, because a lot of times the lounge fries have the the small bags have the leather on both sides, and because the, the Roosevelt shirts are like that little bit of a sheen material, it like slides off sometimes. So this it, this is nicer. And it glows in the dark, this guy right here. But this is nice. This is a nice bag. I'm gonna use this bag quite a bit, especially if there is, the rumor right now is there might be a Ghostbusters Halloween Horror Nights house. This will become my Halloween Horror Nights backpack for sure. So I will be wearing this every single day. Guaranteed to ruin it in the rain, but you know what? That's what bags are for, right? To be used. Um, but no, it's pretty cool. This is good. And honestly, um, you know, so these like mini bags are normally like what? Like anywhere from like 78 to like 88 or 90 bucks. This one was 100 bucks. They only made a thousand of them. That's why it was very nice of Ross. I'm very appreciative of you, Ross, to have let me buy this one off of you. Um, because there was only a thousand. And I, I know they reopened the link because they had like a hundred more. But um, this, I think, is one of the best lounge flies ever. Also, I just see this. There's a little zipper up top here, too, in the exterior pouch. That's nice. For the mints. Or the, you know, that's probably where I'll put my hand sanitizer. So it's easy to get. But the, 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 colli the collider part is also a bag. I didn't open all. I didn't take all the foam out yet because I was worried about the. I don't want it to collapse on itself. I've had lounge flies where, like, they do not hold their shape. But this one's pretty good. This one did me well. This one was able to hold uh, my cups and uh, my little mini puff guy and everything. So happy with this bag. Very happy with this bag. Um, but yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Um, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Let's talk about it for a hot second here too. Uh, I have seen the film. I enjoyed seeing the film in a movie theater. Um... I think that Ghostbusters Afterlife was superior. Oh, wait, I gotta open my drink. Okay, so this is what I'm drinking tonight. Whoop. This is, so I am part of a beer club for um, Lazy Dog, the only one that's like anywhere near me. Um, I'm getting a really bad pimple right there. Um, and uh, so every like three months, I think I get like an eight pack of beer and they're always like different themed. This time it was themed to dinosaurs. And this is a sticky Ithiosaurus hazy IPA with guava. Um, and this is a 6.9% from Storm Peak Brewing Company. Um, yeah. Strata Vista Lani Hops. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what a lot of stuff means. So um, I'm going to open that. And then, um, what was I saying? Ghostbusters Afterlife. Yes. Uh, uh, I rewatched every Ghostbusters movie. The, the, the two originals, the 2016, and then I watched Afterlife again. I've seen Afterlife, like, a lot. And honestly, like, I love a Ghostbusters movie. I even love a bad Ghostbusters movie. Um, I, when I was rewatching the 2016 movie, I was, I think I was just really happy there was a Ghostbusters movie. I don't love it. I wish it had just been its own thing, like something that wasn't Ghostbusters. I don't know if it was a smart idea to do like, do a complete reboot or not. Um, but it's like just different enough where it's like, I don't, I don't know. Um, you're, I'm like, I don't know how to put it. Like I still watch it, but I was just like, it. It doesn't really, it feels like it's making fun of its own premise. And I don't like that when a movie does that. Cause I'm like, especially cause it's a remake. So you're like, why remake it if you don't like the original, you know, like, I don't know. Um, but I obviously I like, I love the first one. I grew up watching the first one and the second one. And um, the second one is definitely, there are some wild swings in that one. And it is a creep factor with the baby and Janos and, Vigo and you know that big swing with the Statue of Liberty at the end it was a little like Arr. um but uh yeah but Afterlife for me I just that one has like that emotional thing that happens at the end of the movie with 
with uh, Egon is just like, it gets me every single time I watch it. It's just so emotional. I love the story of like a family, like that, it, it felt like an 80s Amblin movie where it, it, like a little bit of a haunted house movie with a mystery, you know, and yeah, there is definitely fan service in it and everything, but I just, I just love the way I feel by the end of the movie. And I love the discovery of it, but I also love that, you know, front and center, it's actually a story about this family that's just trying to survive, you know, and, um, and, and stay together. And I think there's just something really, I don't know, it's like touching about that. Isn't this a single mom? And like, I don't know. I like it a lot. So, um, it, 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 it means a lot to me, that movie. I like it. Um, I, I would say this one I didn't like as much, but I did enjoy seeing it in the theater. Like I've got, it, it's hard because there's a couple of like minor qualms I have with the movie and I don't want to talk about it too much because I don't want spoilers. And I think it, it, if you are thinking about seeing it, I think it is worth seeing. Um, but it definitely is not the same vibe as, as that. And it's definitely not the same vibe as the first two movies. So it's trying to be something else, which is good. Um, it's definitely one of those where I was like, okay, they're really trying to be like Ghostbusters is like a family event now. Because I, I don't know that Ghostbusters 1 and 2, especially the first one, was ever meant to really be like a family film. I, I mean, it's very sexual. And, um, you know, I, I think that kind of came out of it because of the cartoon show and, and things. And um, I did order, because you can order right now on Amazon, the complete series of Extreme Ghostbusters, which I did. And I saw multiple people get their copy delivered. And I had the notice from Amazon I like checked that day. It was like, out, you know, not out for delivery, but it said arriving today by 10 p.m. And then I got at like 7 p.m. an email that was like, there's been a delay and you need to acknowledge the delay or we're going to cancel this order. And I was like, what? It's because I ordered it in January when the link first went up. And so I paid like 20 bucks for it. And now it's like $45. And I think they're trying to cancel orders in order to get more money out of it. So I like got on the thing with Amazon. I was like, what the hell, man? I was like, I literally, this said earlier today, it was coming today. And I was like, and now I'm saying like, not for like a month and a half and I have to do this order. So I was like, I, I, I was like, I have a friend who lives 15 minutes from me and he got his copy. I am so confused. And we ordered it at the exact same time, like why he got his and I didn't get mine. Um, and they were basically like, it's coming. So now my Amazon thing says April 2nd. We'll see. I, I'm going to be so mad if it doesn't. Um, because I love Extreme Ghostbusters. If you have never watched Extreme Ghostbusters, I think you could, because it is of that era where they were definitely making cartoons that were like, well, parents are watching these, you know, like, yeah, kids are going to watch them, but they were really like, this is, this is the story we're doing and this is the medium we're using. Like, it wasn't catering to children. Um, and so there's a lot of very adult themes in there. Like, I think one of the first few episodes is like, um, you know, obviously it's diverse, uh, diversely represented too um because we have a female ghostbuster there's the ghostbuster that's um in the wheelchair and um there's a hispanic one too eduardo who was my favorite um and um but there's an episode where like they go to play and he's like going to play basketball and they're like oh he can't play with us we don't play with jewish people and i was like what the it, what and i'm like first of all i didn't even you know uh, everything that's happened in the last couple months aside I remember, like, so I had watched this because it was on Hulu for a hot second um, a couple of years ago. And I remember going to watch it and being like, holy cow, I can't believe I watched this movie. That was like, it wasn't even like a vague, like, oh, this is kind of like, you know, maybe it's about racism. Maybe it's about prejudice. Maybe it's not. And it's just like, uh, no, we're straight up being like these kids, these teenagers, they're awful because they are prejudiced, like racist little teenager. And I was like. Good for this show. Good for you. Um, I got to rewatch the uh, original show um, because I remember being scared out of my mind with the um, with the boogeyman. I was like, I couldn't remember. Um, and um, I had somebody send me a set here for it. It's like right behind me here. But I didn't know that the Ghostbusters... Like, so here's the thing. Ghostbusters, it's surprising me that I don't actually have, like, a Ghostbusters tattoo. And that's why it's like, oh, I can't believe I don't have more Ghostbusters stuff around me. Ghostbusters was my, like, Power Rangers before Power Rangers. Like, I love Ghostbusters. Like, I legitimately was, like, when I was, like, 18, I was, like, should I go to school for, like, zoology? Or, uh, yeah, zoology, which is not the study of animals, but it's, like, the... Wait, is it zoology? But it's, like... 
the study of like the strange and unknown. And like, I was like, well, I could do like, I wanted to learn more about ghosts and lore and like that sort of a thing and be like, you know, and, um, obviously I was like, I think I'm going to stick with film, <laughs> but, um, but no, I, I mean, like it, it was just, it was just one of those things. Like I remember having the Ghostbusters toothpaste, like I'd ask Santa Claus every year for a proton pack. And it was like, after three years, I finally got one. Cause I remember I got the slime pack from the second movie one year and I was like, ah, oh, this is the wrong one. But I was still was like, but it's still cool. And then, um, the like I finally got like the actual one like the thing and it had the, the the I just thought it was so cool my brother and I had the trap too it was like the thing had broken off of it the handle and then the pedal the tube and the pedal separated so you used to have to take the tube and you would have to go and the trap would be like <laughs> to open um but yeah I, re I remember that and um I think I, I'm pretty sure I still have the proton pack at my mom because the proton pack came with like a thing where you like if you'd spin the back with your finger it would be like a pke meter where it like spin around um and there's a fun there's a fun like easter egg for that in the new frozen empire movie but um i i just i i love it i i those are the things where i'm kind of like you know if i ever see them at like a yard sale or somewhere or whatever um i would love to pick them up uh you know, and it's one of those where I'm like, I don't want to pay like a million dollars because that's why I had to get the Hasbro like proton pack because I was like, I knew I wouldn't forgive myself if I didn't get this stuff because I was like, little me is like, you finally got that proton pack. Um, so, um, but I'm not, I'm not, I feel like Ghostbusters fans can sometimes be um, sort of like Star Wars fans and be a little um, cold, like, you know, or gatekeepy and i don't like that uh i feel like ghostbusters that's why i loved extreme ghostbusters because it was like the story can continue and it can be for everybody and that because egon was their like mentor but then the other ghostbusters ended up coming back in the second season and stuff for an episode and i was like this this is what the movie should be like this is it's for me for the last 25 years i've been like why don't they just make this the movie i mean i know that i know that we lost Harold Ramis and stuff but you know, I don't think they couldn't have done it with, they could have done it with like Ray or done it with all of them, you know? Um, but I'd also like to see Ghostbusters expand past like the main lore into something else where I'm like, I'd love to see like a horror movie, like a, an actual, like a director of horror take on one of the tales. And maybe it's like, takes place somewhere else the same way like Afterlife did, but it can be, it doesn't have to be in the main universe. It can be like a Ghostbusters story. Um, so I'd, I'd love that, you know, and, and it's kind of like strip it down you know, cause, cause what, what's it about, you know, at its core. And, um, I think everybody's got different opinions on it and things like that, but I, I do, I love all ghosts. I love every Ghostbusters movie and I really enjoyed seeing Frozen Empire. I saw it a couple times and, um, I would say it's, it's worth seeing. It is not my favorite of all of them. Um, but I really do hope that we get another one because I do really like, like Carrie Coon and, uh, Mackenzie Davis and, um, you know, Paul Rudd and stuff. I like them all and I like this thing. And I feel like, um, if they just did like a little, there, it's the things where it was like just these little moments. I don't want to talk about it yet because it's still so brand new. Um, so I'll, I'll stop here cause I don't want it to be like spoilery or anything, but there's just a couple of these like story lines where I was like, this doesn't really make sense. Like, you know, like where it's just kind of like, it's clear to me that some stuff got cut out or, um, uh, like, I don't know. There's there's some stuff in the trailers that's not in the movie, and, and I know that happens all the time, but I don't know. There's just a little bit of stuff. It's just a little bit here and there. And I'm like, and it's just enough where I'm like, ah, oh, they just done this, or they just done that. But it's not enough to, like, really ruin it for me. But I like I, I like going to see the movie theater, too, because I feel like there's nothing like hearing a proton pack turn on when you're in, like, a movie theater. So, um, but yes, I definitely, I, I, I think it's worth, you know, seeing uh, if you're a fan of Ghostbusters at all, because I, I, it's just one of those things where I'm like, I, I just, I do like going to movies again when they re-released and, you know, I've been lucky enough that I, I've gotten to see the original Ghostbusters in a movie theater within the last couple, like the last 10 years, no, maybe longer than that, because the, the theater at CityWalk before it was Cinemark and then also the Cinemark that was that the other one that was next door they would on Saturday play like older movies for like five bucks or whatever. And I, I saw Ghostbusters. I saw, I saw Jurassic Park again in that. Um, 
it was like cool to be able to see this movie in like the big screen. Like I'd, I always, you know, I, I answered, it was on TV and then our local video store in our town was Max Movies, uh, was doing a contest where you, there was like, you had a piece of paper and you can answer all these questions, which is wild. It was like 10 questions and you're like, obviously you can't cheat because there's no internet. Um, but the movie had been on TV. And so my mom like sat me down and she asked me all the questions and we answered them and I turned it in and I won. And I had, what I won is a VHS copy of Ghostbusters that I dropped, uh, when I got home and the, the flap that covered the film broke off. Um, it did like not right away, but it did, you know, happen. And, uh, but that VHS kept going, baby, that kept, kept going, kept going. So, um, so I might, you know, I'm a fan. I, I enjoy it. Um, anyway, let me scroll back through this chat here. I, uh, oh, what I was saying about the animated Ghostbuster series. I'm so sorry. I went off on a tangent there. The complete series has only been released like once and it was a couple of years ago. I think like Hallmark did it or something like that. And it came in like a firehouse box set. I didn't know these other, even if you bought every volume there is that's out there, it's missing like 40 episodes or something like that, which is wild. So somebody had sent me this collection that is the real Ghostbusters, the animated series. And it is, let me, let me pull it out here. That's what I was doing. You know, I moved pins that were here and I have no idea where I put them. Whoops. This is my Castiel. Um, my Dean. Oh, I put it right next to it. Or oh, that's Sam. Sorry. Sorry, Sam. 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 So, I've gotten this. Volumes one through five. But I think they've released... So, this is over 50 episodes of the animated series. But I think there's like 140 episodes of the show. And I believe there's like six through nine volumes maybe but even then that only gets you up to like a hundred episodes it's not the full show and i'm like that so i regret i'm upset that i never had known they had released it that one time in that set because apparently that was the only way you've ever gotten the whole series so it's like i need to i need to figure out how to get my hands on that so if anybody knows or you know has an extra copy that they're willing to part with I will happily pay for that. Um, you know, obviously, not an arm and a leg, but maybe just a leg. Sorry, now I've messed up all my shelves. Dropped my heart. Um, I saw somebody in here ask about the Beetlejuice 2 trailer, or I should say Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Um, so does that imply, so does the title Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice imply that if this movie goes well, there'll be a Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice? Because I feel like there should be, right? Like, Or is the title supposed to be combined with the first movie? So it's Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. You know, so you say it three times that way. I think I think it should be the... I'm hoping there's a third. I don't even... haven't even seen the second yet. It could be the worst movie ever. Um, but, uh, yeah, I... Um, okay, sorry, John. John brought up, because he's bringing up the Ghostbusters clothes I have. There, if you are a fan and you are looking for something to show you, think I know that Her Universe put out a collection, and it's like available at Hot Topic and available at HerUniverse.com. And um, I think some of them are having a sale or something. But they did the jumpsuit, so they got the full flight suit, which I've never had before. But I, I will say that about the Her Universe one is the legs are really wide on it, so be prepared to have to like fold it back or something like that. Um, and uh, and then uh, I got this really cool hoodie that was all these like uh, they they like glow-in-the-dark slime um, on the on the arm and then the back was glow-in-the-dark which I wore it to the movies before I had taken like a picture or anything and I, I remember going to sit in my seat and I was like I can't remember if this was glow-in-the-dark or not and I had like taken it off because it's always hot at the movies lately I don't know why they're doing this saving money or whatever but like movies should always be cold because otherwise it gets like sweaty and people fall asleep and whatever I don't know um and I was like, oh, this jacket's glowing. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, that's just stuff out there. There's surprisingly like not a lot of like I can't go to Target and get like Ghostbusters stuff. So like when I went to go see the movie, I ran to like City Walk because they they've been selling Ghostbusters merchandise there. And so I was able to get a um, who are you going to call shirt and uh, I wore that and stuff. So, yeah. So there's some other there's some other stuff. Uh, there was like a Slimer cardigan that was really cute. Um, and then there was, um, some like, um, a girl's fit of one of the Ghostbusters shirt. It's like a little ringer tee and stuff, but 
Beetlejuice. I thought the trailer was pretty good. I thought I thought it looked pretty cool. I mean, it was very like, we're not going to show you anything. Here's my thing. So I'm going to assume it's Lydia's husband that dies um, or, or something. That's what I would assume just because he's he doesn't appear to be a character. I am hoping this movie, because I just watched Beetlejuice at like Halloween again. Um, the like... They say in Beetlejuice that the ghosts can stay in the house for like a thousand years. So where are Barbara and Adam? And why are they not in this movie? Did they try and get them or did they just not write them in there? Because that movie really is about Barbara and Adam. And so that's where I'm like, I don't know. This will be interesting. But it does have me very excited. I can't wait to see it. I'm happy Catherine O'Hara is in it. I like Jenna Ortega and Winona Ryder. And I really hope Winona Ryder gets, you know, to shine in this movie. But it'll be... It'll be interesting because, like, it was Barbara and Adam that saved her from Beetlejuice. So, you know, I don't know. I did, like, the juice is loose part. I I'm looking forward to it. Also, it's wild for a movie called Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice isn't in a lot of the movie, the original movie. So this should be, this should be interesting. Um, it looks like Trey's got a bun in the oven. Is that what you're saying, Trey? Um... I, so at Lazy Dog, you can get, um, one of the things they do is, uh, like it all, they have these on the back of the menus or whatever, they have, um, these like TV dinners. And if you buy five, you get one free, but they're like 10 bucks each. And they're definitely like, I'm not going to shave you if you eat the whole helping because it's, it's, a, it's like enough of a helping where you could just split it in half if you had like a little extra or something. But, um, I was like, I bought five of them to get the six one. So I just, that's what I just made. So I put that in the TV dinner and uh, I did the lemon chicken. It was pretty good. It's pretty good. And no, I have not brought my dogs to Lazy Dog yet. Where the Lazy Dog is, um, on 192, it's just like insanely crowded and busy. And I, I would, I would, I don't want to, I don't want to bring the, subject the dogs to that. Um, but yeah, let me, let me just, let me scroll on back here. See what, are, what have we missed? What are we chatting about these days? You know? Um, what is May 10th? How do we, how we, uh, I looked at getting tickets for the Phantom Menace, like, re-release, by the way, that's coming out, like, May 3rd, I think is the official release date, so it'll be, like, 3rd, 4th, 5th, um, and, like, the AMC, where it is at Disney Springs is, like, not good seats. I forgot to look at the... It's a Cinemark now. I was like, I forgot to look at the AMC at CityWalk, but that's a Cinemark. Um, so, uh, I don't know. I was, I was like, bummed out, because I was like, well, I want to see it in a good seat. And, um, hmm. Guys, I really hope the Ghostbusters are coming back to Universal Studios, because I would lose my mind. Like, I think there's a rumor that, there, that there's going to be, like, a new parade that's all about... I mean, I don't know if there's any truth to it or whatever. I literally, I only read by like whatever Alicia Stellar posits on Twitter or, uh, or I just see by scrolling because you know how like it'll just recommend like feeds for you. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. And that there might be like a classic movie parade or something like that where it'd be like Back to the Future, E.T., Jaws, Ghostbusters. And I'm like, please, please, please. Um, even though Ghostbusters is not a universal movie it still is like one of those properties like i remember going to see the show when i was a kid um i'm sorry i'm reading i'm seeing what everybody had to say about about the movie Oh, God. Okay, Cassandra's saying, would Universal have a Ghostbusters and a Beetlejuice house in the same year? I don't... I don't know. I don't know that Universal would do another Beetlejuice house. I don't know why I'm saying that, since they did it before, but I think there was, like, some, like, push and shove about that. Um, but I... I mean, that would be incredible, wouldn't it? Uh, I'd be totally into that. When does Beetlejuice come out? Is that what's May 10th? No. Hold on. I know you're going to say it before I find it. September. September 6th. Um, oh, I don't know. September 6th? Mm -hmm. 
I'm not sure. Maybe I, I see. I think I'd, I, I know I'd read another rumor. And I, sometimes I think it's just people wishful thinking, but they were saying like there, there, there could be like a Ghostbusters one and two house. And that would be cool. Um, I always thought Afterlife would have been cool because it's kind of got its like setup of like a haunted house sort of a thing. But I don't know. I'd be into that. Oh, Ross is asking, any more drone shows near the house? Do we know where the drones will be at Disney Springs? Like, is there a good viewing spot? I have no idea. I never saw the Disney Springs um, Christmas drone show that they did over there. My guess is it's on the side, like, behind um, uh, House of Blues. And um, at Universal, I'm assuming it's just over that body of water where the water show was before, before it got damaged. Um, that's just my guess. I have not seen any more color-changing clouds yet, though, so... Um, yeah, sorry. Sorry, I don't have more information about that, but I'm hoping that we'll get more information sooner than later. I mean, it is basically almost April, and, you know, they're going to start teasing the summer stuff, because i got to assume that something like that would be ready to go for the summer, to draw in crowds for the summer, but, hmm. Oh, no. Kim is saying, all the movies I wanted to see this year, reviews have pushed me away from, even with A-list. Argyle, Madam Web, and Ghostbusters. That is true. I did see Argyle, Kim, um, and I didn't hate it. It's definitely very Matthew Vaughn, like very over the top. It does feel like there was no editing down in that movie where like nobody was like, hey, we could move this forward faster. Or we don't need this. So there's moments where it feels a little like made for TV, if that makes sense. Um, I don't mean that in like a disrespectful way, but, it, it, you know, it, it felt like it was trying to hit a certain number of lines commercial break number of lines commercial break so almost sort of a thing um i didn't see madam web i heard it was just so awful but i will watch it when it's on a streaming service or i can get to it for like free or nothing um but i but of those three i would not put ghostbusters in that same thing i i think that i was looking back on it on um imdb that like or on um ron tomatoes and stuff well the ron tomatoes i don't always agree with that um but like other than the first movie and even the first movie no and the critics don't like ghostbusters movies so it's tough like i wouldn't trust critics on that one i'd probably trust like the fans i guess i don't know i i trust like word of mouth um uh do 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 but the next movie i am pretty excited i mean i'm going to see kong versus godzilla but i don't know that i'm excited i'm just going to see it um is uh that alien movie looks good at alien romulus did you see the trailer for that that looks spooky all the face huggers that are like jumping in the ship and the one hits the girl in the face <laughs> hold on sorry i'm scrolling through scrolling through I'm trying to catch up to you guys. Brandon, I have that same, the Ghostbusters, the, the, I bought that too. That was the first time I had them on DVD, the green like slipcover and it was the two movies that was, yeah. I, I still have it. I have them on, I have them all on Blu-ray now, but I had like collected them like one after the other. And what's annoying is the only one that doesn't have a digital copy is the first movie for some weird reason, but, um, Oh, Trey, you have a lazy dog, too. That's cool. Yeah, I, I love lazy dog. I feel like the meals themselves, I feel like sometimes the prices are like all over the place, but they have an incredible happy hour that happens like twice a day. It's so long. And the beer club thing, and they get really good beers, but their beer club is a deal. And they send you like coupons and stuff like that. Like there was one coupon where it was like, it was like buy one, get free on But there was another one that was like $25 off your order. All you had to do was order something. And I was like, that is wild. Um, oh, Regina's asking, did I see Dune yet, Rhino? Sorry if you already talked about it, if you hadn't caught a stream in a while. Um, I did see it. I don't think I talked about it in the stream, though, maybe. Um, I saw it. I enjoyed it. I think it definitely deserves all the hype and the praise that it's getting. Um, I mean, it, it, the the thing is that director, Dennis Villanueva, I don't know how to say it. I say Villanueva, but I don't know if that's true. Um, 
I think he's a phenomenally talented director. A Blade Runner 2049 was just an incredible film that I think deserved way more eyes on it than it got. Um, and I like that movie Prisoners with um, Hugh Jackman and... Um, gosh, who's the other... Who's the other parent in that movie? I cannot remember, but I know Bill Dano's in it. Paul Dano. Who the hell's Bill Dano? Um, but uh, it is... Um, I thought it was good. I The thing I... I think I like the first one just a little bit better only because... Uh, oh my... Alexa is talking to me again. Um, is I liked like the technology in the first one and because this one is like all in the desert, there really wasn't a lot of that technology and stuff. But this one was definitely very much like an epic in all terms of it like what he's doing and how everything's going and it is a it's like putting these two together like this culmination of this story is like is good it's solid i mean he has to make a third one because i mean i guess this it's how the book ends is how this ends and so i i didn't really know anything about it but i think it i think it's really interesting like i might i want my friend to really see it because i think she'd love it and it's just there's a thing where like Movies can be great and just not resonate with you. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying it doesn't resonate with me. It's good. It was. Just, it's just one of those where I was like, it was very long. And, um, but it's one of those where it is, it is a movie theater movie. Like, it, it, you will never, I don't care how big your TV is or whatever sound system you have. That was a movie to be seen on a very big screen. Oh, the eclipse. Yes. I don't think we're going to see it here, though. I'm not sure. Um. Oh my God! Cassandra's suggesting a Scooby Doo house for Halloween Horror Nights. I would die. I think that had been like considered once, maybe, or the rumor was. Um, I think that would be like a great fun house. Because here's the thing: like people popping out behind corners is is like gonna scare me. So like, I don't need things to be like blood and guts to be scary. It's like the Beetlejuice house or the Ghostbusters house, like sometimes it's just like inherent like it can be fun scary but it can also be like adult scooby-doo too you know what i mean like have fun with it um I, john's right go see poorly reviewed films support theater support art like i i have a thing where i'm like if you want to see the movie see the movie i think you know it does suck sometimes because there are movies where it was like i think the thing with madam webb is always i was like i saw that original trailer not to not to poo-poo on anybody's excitement for I was like, I don't think this is going to be a good movie. And then hearing one thing, I was like, nah. So that's what it kind of leaned into for me. Um, hmm. Oh, Wasted Pro, Wasted Poe is saying, I think both Dune movies are aesthetically amazing while not exactly being exciting. I think that's a good way to put it. Put it. I think what is really exceptional about those films is that there's a lot of like really dense. Um, sorry, I left the sound on. A lot of really dense, um, uh, like mythology and lore in in that world, and they do a really good job of like if you just watch the movie. Like, you'll know what they're talking about. And I, and I, cause I'm one of those people where if it's like too fantasy, I struggle. Um, like, I don't, didn't watch Game of Thrones. I mean, I might someday, but I don't love, like, I prefer Harry Potter over Lord of the Rings because I, there's still that element of reality to it, right? Like, it's a world that exists side by side with ours, so there's like some grounding in it. Where like Lord of the Rings, there's no logical grounding that exists within our world at all. Um, and so it's, which one of those sort of where I'm like, I prefer that, you know, anyway, I mean, J.K. Rowling, she can, she can get in her barrel and sail all over a waterfall at this point. I don't care. I saw, I actually, right before we started this, speaking of Scooby-Doo, I was reading this whole thing about Scooby-Doo too, because it turned like 20 years old today. And I was like, were these movies just misunderstood? I think, like, it's one of those where I was like, I'd like to see them give a live-action Scooby-Doo another shot and, like, commit to it being, like, the Brady Bunch movie or, like, Barbie. Like, don't dumb it down, you know? It, it, like, just, like, commit to the material, I guess, you know? Um, oh, God, I gotta go see Godzilla minus one. 
And Jay is correct. Lord of the Rings does have sexy elves. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, yeah, Cassandra's bringing it. She's saying some of the cartoon bad guys in Scooby-Doo were scary, and I think it would be a beautiful house to create. Mirrors and doors, that quintessential old abandoned mansion haunted house. I think the lightning flashing. I, I love the idea of just like the door opening, the door opening, the door opening, or like you see one person go through and then the other person go out and stuff like that. And I just think, like, think of the merchandise you would sell alone with that, or the photo ops you could have. I think that the food items you could do. See, that's the thing where, I'm like, if you're really thinking from it from a business perspective, I think it would be great. Also, I've got a Scooby-Doo onesie I would wear, so just saying. Um, and then, uh, I love Scooby-Doo. Um, what was I just going to say about that? They were, you were saying, I, I would love the tie-in to Supernatural, because if you have not seen... The Supernatural episode, the crossover of the Scooby-Doo episode, I think it's on Netflix. Um, I think Supernatural is still on Netflix. It might, I, God, I hope it is. Um, I mean, I bought it all, but it, it, I forget what season it is. It's definitely one of the later, almost like one of the last seasons. But you do not have to have watched like any of Supernatural to appreciate it. You just like get a basic understanding of it. It's like brothers and an angel and they're hunting, you know, hunting ghosts. Like that's all you need to know. You don't need to know anything about the storyline because it is a standalone episode, but it is not only a phenomenal episode of Scooby-Doo, but it is a phenomenal episode of Supernatural. And it is so funny because it does become very adult at one part in it where basically they're like, you mean we can die and go to there? It, there is a hell. Like there's a whole confrontation of that mortality in it which is like this hilarious scene so i highly highly recommend um highly recommend that episode um and like i said you can watch it all by itself I, honestly that'd be a great introductory episode for you into supernatural but um yeah drew's bringing up they are showing all nine of the star wars movies back to back but i was like that so some are over two hours, right? So that's at least, but then there's got to be breaks in the middle. I guess like you just use the bathroom with the credits, but like that means that theater's got to be going for like 20 hours. That is wild. Um, I would, I would see every one of the Star Wars movies if they were re-released. I mean, I would definitely rewatch the prequel trilogy. I, I, you know, even, even though like they're not my favorite, um, I still would like to see it on that like big screen because you know it's I was a child basically when I saw him but um I've seen I've seen Return of the Jedi in a movie theater recently um but like I would love to watch episode three in a movie theater again um so I'd definitely see those because those are I feel like further away from me having seen them in a theater than the other ones are which might not be true because four five and six I don't think I've been in a theater either since I was a kid, but, um, cause that was when they did like the special trailer. And that was like the first time I like really saw them. Um, but yeah, I, I, would, I'd see those. Um, I, I'm, I'm planning on seeing the Phantom Menace. So at like, the very least, but, um, um, yeah, nine movies in a row sounds punishing. I don't know that I've ever actually watched nine movies in a row, even when I've been sick to my stomach dying, like on a deathbed situation. Like I don't, like, I remember that I got so violently sick once, and I was like, all I could do was put in Battlestar Galactica, and I watched that. The, 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 the like, 2005 show. I don't know if it's 2005, but that early 2000 show, that show was phenomenal, and I'm so happy that happened. But I remember being like, I didn't even watch nine hours of that in a row. Like, nine, not nine hours. I didn't watch 18 hours of that. Yeah, how can you do that? I can't do that. I can't do that. Because then also, the thing that kind of sucks about that is, like, Rise of Skywalker... Not great. So you're not going to end on a very good note. So you want that to be the last thing you see? You want, also, when you're, like, exhausted? Mm, I don't know. I remember, you guys remember, I'm trying, like, the last time I did, like, back-to-back -back movies was definitely, like, a Twilight movie situation. Because I was like, okay, I'm going to, like, I got into it at one point. Um, I acknowledge they're terrible. But I think it was, like, did I watch? I wa definitely watched... I think it was the third one. I didn't, the not the fourth one or anything. I think it was the third one. They showed the first, the second, and then the third. Or I did, it, maybe it was the second, but I definitely did like two of those. I'm like, I don't, two movies in a row. I'm at that age where I'm like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I don't want to do that anymore.
Yeah, sleepovers, right. Um, okay, so what was I just looking at? Oh, God, I just lost my train of thought. Somebody said something in the chat, and I was going to look it up. Um, when will I be in Universal again? Um, I don't know, some point this week, I think. Um, wait. Where I live in the middle of nowhere, we are in the 100% totality viewing. Oh, wow. They've canceled schools and warning of traffic. Plan to take our 4x4 out in the middle of the field. Wait, is the is it happening during the day? I thought it was a lunar eclipse. Is it a solar eclipse? Somebody fill me in on this eclipse. Okay, so Delana is saying I'd watch Andor in a theater all the way through. Here's my guilty thing. I'm only on episode four of Andor, and it's not because I don't like it. I love it, but it's one of those where I was like, I really want to sit and just completely devote my time to it because I'm so excited for that. I'm excited for the Acolyte, too. I don't know if so that's right. Carrie Ann Moss is a Jedi? Yeah, of course I'm excited for this show. Are you freaking kidding me? Um, also, planned as multiple seasons? Hell yeah. I Finally, jeez. You see the thing where, like, Obi-Wan, they basically, like, the complete series is what they said. And I'm like, okay, so we're not getting a season two? That's fine. I wanted another one of those, but that's whatever. Um, oh, my God. It is a solar eclipse. Oh. Holy guacamole. April 8th. South America gets one on October 2nd. Um, acro okay, across parts of Mexico, Canada, and the U.S. from Texas to Maine. Okay, well, so I don't think we're going to see it here, right? What time and date is the solar eclipse? Eh? The first location in cent, uh, continental North America that will experience totality is Mexico's Pacific coast at around 11.07 a.m. Oh. Okay, oh, okay, it has a map. Here, hold on, let me, let me show you this map. I, can, I think I can pull this into the chat, into the video. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, I mean, you guys know more than I do. Oh. Oh, fudge. I'm not going to be able to see any of this. <laughs> Wisconsin, you're not getting any. Illinois. Mass, you ain't getting any. What's the other... What's that other part that it's showing? What's this... The, oh, you can't see the cursor. But what is the... Oh, 2023 annual solar eclipse. The 2024 solar eclipse. Wait, there was a solar eclipse in 2023? What the hell? Where was I? Clearly not anywhere around here. Jeez, Texas is like living its best life with the solar eclipse over here. So San Antonio, you're in a blackout. I'm trying to see. I was trying to see where and where else in Texas it's going to be. I was like, what's Austin got going for it? I can't go back to Austin right now. Oh, Austin's in the path. That's cool. I remember when I was a little kid, we had one and we did the thing where like made the boxes and everything, but like I only vaguely remember. It was one of those where you're like, don't look up. That's cool. Yeah, I'm not anywhere. I'm not even anywhere like remotely close to be able to get to it or I'd be like, oh, let's drive up and go see it. Yeah. Anyway. What are we at? Computer battery is at 48%. All right. It's lasting longer than I thought it would. So um, I don't know. I don't know how true that map is. So that map says it is from Pat Benatar's total solar eclipse of the heart. No, I'm just kidding. Um, through the... Oh, okay. So here's the thing about that map. I think that X is only, though. so the X that I showed 
is just the path of totality. Sorry, it's a grid. So on the side it says, so Orlando, Florida is going to be 50%. Interesting. And then like, what's what? so what? Wisconsin's probably like 52, right? Wisconsin, what do you get? Milwaukee, what are you getting? You're getting, oh, is it 10%? This is a hard map to read. I'm not going to read this. <laughs> Figure it out on the day. But that's so cool. This will also be the first time in hundreds of years to have two different kinds of cicadas hatch at the same time. Oh, my God, that it is going to be so loud in the summertime then, isn't it? Cicadas make that weird. I always thought it was the sound of electricity or something like that. It's just that weird the sound. It's so loud. Oh, Trey is asking how therapy is going. I had my second session today. Um, it is going well. It's one of those sort of like, it's hard when you're, when you're carrying an iceberg, it's like, what did any, did anything even happen? But it was kind of like the first session was more like I was being probed, like asked questions, you know, being asked a lot of questions and things like that about stuff. And, it, and the, you know, that session was good. And it was very clear to me where I was like, man, I have a lot of stuff to talk about. And then um, the session today, like, you know, you know, not to be like, oh, what were we all doing is, um, uh, was about imposter syndrome and you know um was like kind of the main focus of it but there was a there was a lot discussed but it, it's good it it definitely has that sort of like you're conversing with someone the idea being i believe this, my therapist has said to me is that you um that it's like equipping you with survival tools more than anything else being like okay how do we approach situations differently you know what are barriers to uh, you know to our um better well-being you know how can you know um we make we make things better for ourselves and things like that and so and um you know courses of action and things like that so um today was also one of those where i was just like god i talk so much and then it was just like the hour was gone and i was like oh should i have homework like i'm one of those people but laurie's asking when's my next disneyland trip i am going may oh fudge yeah no okay i i was like it's the weekend after the star wars thing i was like oh shoot i can't go um, May 11th, something like that. It's like that weekend. Like I'm going out there. We're going to stay at the Pixar hotel. So that'll be fun. Um, Oh, John, you, the disgusting way to put it, but I feel like accurate. He says therapy is essentially throwing up and then sifting through the things that come up to find what caused you to throw up. Yeah. Uh, oh, because it's definitely like we'll be talking one thing and then it's like a triggering. It's not like they're triggering me, but I will be like this thing and this thing and this thing. And it's like you have to contextualize everything. And there's a lot of stuff where you're like, huh, like I didn't realize that, you know, it's weird. It's weird stuff where like to, to today it was a lot of like, I don't know. I mean, I do know where my feelings have come out of this. Like I've always been an insecure person. But um, these feelings of me being like, I can't do it. I can't succeed. I can't do these things is definitely was exacerbated in like the 20. Patrick, thank you. I was waiting for somebody to notice my hoop earrings. Can I see these instead of the black studs? I'm trying them out. These are silver. I want to do black ones. I have black ones. I just have been forgetful to look for them. But so I'm a little piratey right now with the silver ones. I think I'd like to do gold too. But I, my earring up here is silver, so that's why I'm like, eh, I don't know. Um, but I was just trying something new. Honestly, they feel, they're like a little more secure because of the circle. So it's like, but they like hug my ear. The only thing is like my ears aren't pierced in the same place because the person who did it was um, a dummy. I knew that person. But so like this one is definitely a little more like off the ear than like this one that like actually hugs my ear, which is how I feel like it should be. But, um, but yeah. Um, do I want a back to the future for it? No. Um, or I think with back to the future, it can't be Marty. It can't be, it can't be doc. Like we, we're not going to get one. We're not going to get something with Christopher Lloyd and Michael J. Fox 
and I don't think you can improve on perfection is one of those things. It's the same reason why I, I think that back that Ghostbusters movie is like it was the wrong tack to take was remaking Ghostbusters. And I know it's not a literal remake, but it was like it should have it should have veered further away. It should have it shouldn't it should have just been a new team of Ghostbusters somewhere else. It shouldn't you know, it shouldn't have done that thing. So um, I don't think Back to the Future I don't think it works the same way, you know, like I don't, I don't think it can work again. I mean, yeah, sure. If you could give me like continuing adventures, like an animated show. I mean, I know they did the animated show or something, but um, I think it's like, yeah, as much as I love it and I would love like revisiting it, I don't want to see, I don't want to see a remake of that. Also, you know, what's really kind of effed is they would be going to the nineties at this point. I was about to say they'd be going to the 80s because they could remake it now where they're going from the 2000s to the 80s, but 40 years ago is 1984. So they go 30 years backwards, 30 years forward. So they would be going to 1994. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now I know what caused me to throw up that question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's a wasted Poe is saying, I really do not want any more Back to the Future. It's a franchise that's very much dependent on those specific characters. Also, to me, the franchise means 80s. And I agree. I think I definitely, like, agree to that. I, I think I, I if it, they were going to do anything, I would, I'd like to see something, like, in a spiritual vein. Not anything that's, like, a remake or even, like, a direct sequel, but something inspired by, maybe, you know, some something sort of different. Um, but, yeah. Um, I'm trying for those D23 tickets tomorrow, 3 p.m., 3 p.m. Eastern time. Oh, that's your first Disneyland trip. Wow. Okay, sorry. Looking at that. Sorry, I'm just reading what everybody's saying. It's going to be tough tomorrow. It's going to be tough. 1993. I mean, if you watch Ted, that show takes place in 1993 and a single reference of Power Rangers, though, which came out in 1993. A little upset about that. That's fine. We can move on. Um, okay, gang, I'm going to do this for a couple more minutes, but it's been about an hour. We'll do it to... Um, we'll do it till... Because my laptop is down to like 40% right now. We'll do it till 940. Okay, so it's 934 right now. So we've got, we got about six more minutes. So... Um, if anybody has any other questions, Diane, um, I want to tell you cause Diane is, was my, uh, uh, my good friend here, but, um, she's been my Corgi gin hookup. She brings me the good stuff. I like that Corgi gin, um, that distillery closed. Diane swooped in, got a bunch of bottles. She was kind enough to get me an extra bottle. She actually brought me one that I haven't opened yet. That was like bees something. So I haven't tried that yet. But I'm almost out. I'm on to my last, like, because I drank, I basically filled my mini puff marshmallow man with gin on Saturday night and, like, did, I was, like, working on, um, I have a bunch of blank canvases and I wanted, it was like, I'm going to put something on every one of these canvases. I also painted a, um, my, my friend Jill is having a baby and the baby's name is Gwen and, um, because they named it after Spider Gwen and they like that name. And so I painted them a portrait of Gwen, uh, of Spider Gwen. Actually, you know what? I think I can share that photo with you too. Um, and uh, I, um, what was I going to say? I did that, but then I was like, well, I should at least put all of these other, these all of these other things like on canvas right now too. So, I did, I've got a, uh, there's a mini puff. He's over here looking at me. I've got a, um, I'm working on a, a Poochie from the Simpsons. Um, there is a Slimer. Um, there is a Jubilee. And there is a Cyclops. The Cyclops, I think I kind of effed up his face a little bit. So I don't know about that. You guys been watching X-Men 97, by the way? There's two episodes of that out. That's pretty good. That second episode was real good. Here's that, um, oh, jeez, it blows up to full size. Here's that Gwen painting I did for my friend. See, I added, like, a little bit of a splatter here to give it some texture, but you can see that, so. 
Um, that was my gift to them. So they had, she had a baby shower on Sunday. Um, so Diana's asking, is my Stay Puft Sipper the smiley one or the angry one? Yes. In fact, his head turns around. So he's smiley or he's angry. That's the best part about that sipper. It's so good. Um, yes, Trey, she definitely, we, we're definitely going to have to get bourbon drinks at some point when you're in town after this baby pops out. Um, X-Men 97, if you haven't watched that, definitely worth watching. Um, very, like, it's one of those where you're like, yeah, this is like, X-Men is so good in this medium. And like, they, it is very true to the 90s show, which is definitely geared toward older, the more mature uh, people like myself. Um, I did another painting though. What did I do? I painted one green. One blue. Oh, it's the Jubilee and the thing. Wait, did I take a picture of it? Can I share that? I don't usually share when I'm working on it, but no, I don't have it. I didn't take a picture. Um, but it's Jubilee is, is like going to be all neon pink and she's got the like big bubble gum pop because there was like a shot of her doing that and the thing. And I was like, oh, I want to paint that. Um, and then I was like, well, I can't just do Jubilee. I was like, so there was another shot of Scott with his like visor. And I was like, okay, I like that. So I've got ones I'm working on of those, but we'll see how it's, well, how, how it's going to come out. I think I need to do. I think everyone's so crazy for him. I think I might attempt to do a gambit in the crop top, but I don't know if I can do it. He's got like a ton of light. It's not like the X-Men, that classic X-Men series. It's like a lot of shading, a lot of different things. It's not like not, my style is very like goofy, Nickelodeon, classic, cartoony, very big, broad strokes, like Rocco's Modern Life, like that sort of like look to it. And I have a Rocco right over there, but um but yeah so there will be some paintings there will be some paintings um yes lauren is asking do i still have my coffee going yeah do i have the thing in here can i put it on the screen i do have my oops nope oh there it is i was like oh it's in the little corner hold on let me do is there one that goes above it Oh, no, I guess not. I might have deleted it by accident. Um, but yes, this this is where I will post the art. Coffee.com, K-O-F-I.com slash Rhino, R-Y-N-O, over there. Um, so all the paintings end up over there. There's, I think there might be like one or two for sale right now. Like I think there's a Tommy Pickles for sale. And then there is a... That might be it. I did, I, there was a Roger Rabbit one, but that ended up being, um, I used that for my Patreon giveaways, or uh, uh, contests. Um, and so that's going to a good home, uh, which is right here, patreon.com. And over there, um, and if you are a, um, a supporter over there, I just want to remind you, let me see if I have it up really quick. Um... I just wanted to let you know that I posted all the questions this month. I did it a couple days late by accident. Um, uh, but they're all up for the March contest. Where are we? Here we go. Which are all springy. So the the gold tier, that painting is going to be an orange bird painting. So this month that you have the option to wear go orange bird plush or the corkscrew with the... Um, the spirit jersey or the caterpillar lunch fight. I, I was so close to all orange bird, but he was blue and he matches the blue. And I was going for like a springtime thing. So, um, which is, I don't want to embrace the spring because I wish it was going to be cold here longer. I'm really happy that it's been as cold as long as it has. Um, so I don't want to like complain about that too much, but, um, but yeah, uh, I, uh, yeah. I, I just, I miss cold weather. But there you are. For anyone who's a member over there or you want to learn more about it, you can head over to patreon.com slash rhino1185. And don't feel obligated to have to do that or obligated to like stay or whatever because the things change every month. And I try to, on the last day of the month, I try to show everybody like a tease of like, okay, this is what we're going to do for next month. And so then that way you can be like, nah, none of this is for me. I'm good. And like bounce and then come back. You know what I mean? And I'll be better about showing it on here, too, so you don't have to, like, tiptoe over there as much. But um, that, and then um, also on there, I think, don't hold me to it, but I want to try and create exclusive, because originally it was just for those, like, contests and stuff, but 
I want to do exclusive content over there. And I'm thinking about trying to set myself up either like, I was thinking about doing like I could um, do like drives with Rhino where I like chit chat or I was thinking about maybe like daily, like little teeny, like weekly vlog, just like a little video or something. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to I'm going to play around with it. We're going to see what happens. But there is going to be some exclusive stuff over there um, for that as well, because some people are just like not into the contest and they just want to show support. So I just want to make it worth it but i do um i do want to thank everybody for your support whether you are on the patreon whether you have been on my coffee site and and done the paintings for me or you're just you're here every every monday and we're in the chat and we're having fun or you're not even in the chat you're watching this later you're sitting on your couch or behind your computer or whatever watching it back i appreciate you very much all of you out there so if everybody can do me a favor and just hit that thumbs up button. It just spreads it around more. I know it's like weird and lame and sooner or later, there's going to be like 15 things we have to ask. Thumbs up, you know, all this stuff and like whatever, but, um, just do that. It helps, it helps the video a little bit. Um, I appreciate, I appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe. But when you subscribe, you know, if you click the bell, it'll notify you when I randomly decide like on a Saturday morning, I want to do a live stream. Maybe you're around. I don't know. So, um, yeah, but, uh, I've been, I've been carrying around my little, uh, my little pocket three with me trying to get better about using that, like not better about using it. Like, I feel like I'll do this thing where I get like a new thing and I'm like, no, like, like shirts. I do it with shirts too, where it's like, no, it has to be like the perfect time to wear it. And then what happened to so many of my shirts is I outgrew them because I gained so much weight that I was like, well, I didn't get to wear any of those shirts. So it's one of those where I'm like, don't save those really nice things for that 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 day that you think is coming. Just use it when you want to use it because make the day you use it a nice day. Don't save it for the nice day. The day you choose to use it is the nice day. You know what I mean? So it's like I'm trying to embrace that methodology. So I, I like to end these videos with a little bit of that. And so I feel like that's your like take it with you, right? Oh, man. Now I got a thumbs down. Um, it's because I asked for the thumbs up. That's why. Also... I forgot to show you guys these. So if you saw this in in the Dolby Theater at AMC, they gave you pins on the opening weekend. So I got a mini puff and I got a double of a Slimer. So I have two Slimers, um, which is unfortunate because there were like five pins. I'm like, how? How did I end up getting a double? Um, but anyway, um, yeah. But I, I would say, like, if you haven't, if you've got a nice shirt, a nice dress, a nice outfit, you know, or, you know, you've got a new camera, a new pair of sneakers. I do this with my sneakers, too. Um, shoes, whatever, like, bag, you know, like, you know what? Look at it and say, today's the day, baby. You're coming with me. And we're doing this. Like, don't save it for that real nice thing. Like, do it in that moment. Do it in that time. And um, make that day the best day ever. Diane just said it in the chat. Perfect. The best day is today. Don't wait for tomorrow. I agree. Like, you know, it's one of those where it's like, you know, open that thing you've had saved up for a while because you know what? You just got to do it. Like, and it's good. So that's why I like the using the camera. At first I was like very like, no, it's not worthy of this. It's not worthy of this. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Baby, make it worthy of it. Do it, you know, embrace it. I still can't believe there was somebody who was watching this the whole time until I asked for the thumbs up that then gave me a thumbs down. That's cool. <laughs> I'm not going to fixate on that. I'm going to fixate on all the great people in here who have been uh, chatting. I'm going to fixate on all you great people who are watching this back later or are just you just aren't interested in the chat. You don't want to be a part of that. That's great, too. I love to have you here. I really appreciate you being here. Um, I appreciate any and all of you that show your support in any ways that you do. Just positive comments, things like that. You know, just this like this, this being a part of this community that we're creating. Like I didn't create the community you created the community. Like I just started doing this and then you came like, you know what I mean? Like you, you, you can, you can build a birdhouse all you want, but it's not till birds come in that it becomes a birdhouse. And, and so we made that birdhouse together. So I just really, I enjoyed that. And, and it's really, it's nice, you know, and I hope that you think about that and maybe like carry that into other aspects of your life with you, maybe wherever you can, whether it's at work or at home or, you know, in the neighborhood or something like that. Um, I don't know. Um, oh, learned something in here. Thank you, Wasted Pal. Um, oh, I got a second thumbs down. Great. <laughs> it, I'm, he's saying in here on the bright side, thumbs down also counts as engagement for the algorithm. So there we are. Here we are, baby. So it's all good. Um, 
no, 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 no. It, it's all good, everybody. It's I don't, I'm not going to take it to heart because you know what? The 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 better of you is outweigh the lesser than us. You know, so um, and there aren't less than us. You know, what's their stuff? What are they going through? Maybe they're just having a a, a bad bad go of it, and so. Try not to be super judgy about it. But thanks, everybody. I really appreciate you. We will do this again next week, um, you know, as, assuming nothing nothing, nothing happens. Um, and I'd like to, maybe it's not a live stream. I don't know. I'd like to do something else again before next Monday. So we'll see. I, I had done this, like, food review video with my friend Brian, and I never, like, put it together. So I might, like, put that together and throw that up here. But I know I say that every week, but I say it every week because not only am I telling you, but I'm also, like, saying it to myself to get myself hyped. I don't know how else has to do that. Sometimes we just have to stare in the mirror and be like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then one day you will do it. So, um, you know, I just I want to try some stuff. I want to, I want to do this more. Um, it's good for the soul. So thanks everybody. I hope that you have a great week. I hope Monday wasn't too hard to you. And, uh, the rest of the days may they just be better than today. And, uh, you got this. Don't worry about it. Thanks everybody. Bye. Have a great night, great week.